This tape meeting is a presentation at Access Incorporated, a community action agency committed to helping people help themselves. And with that, uh, I want to uh, move the program forward. Dennis, if you'll come up, let's give Dennis a hand. Well, what I'm going to do is just kind of speak up as we go. I'd like to uh, begin with kind of just first thanking you all to be here, for being here. The community conversations are so important that Peter and I took time off from Salem to just to make sure that we were able to meet with you today, and we're hoping that the information we provide will be of value. Uh, we want to help you understand some of the consequences and conclusions from the governor's reset cabinet and how they affect the delivery of services. Because we are in a time when the needs are increasing, as we all know, and yet the revenue sources are decreasing, and we cannot just continue to do things as they've been done in the past. So by way of quick review, uh, we have you know, two major budgets, as we all know, uh, most of us know, we have the all funds budget, which has a piece of it which is the tax and fees, which is a general fund and lottery fund portion, and then you have the federal funds portion, and then other funds, which is kind of everything else. Uh, this has been growing over time. If you look on the far right, you see that it was about $30 billion 10 years ago, and it's $60 billion this, this biennium. And you know, there's reasons why it's grown so much, uh, but it's, the important thing to understand is that we are on a track where it continues to increase. Now, a portion of that is the general funds and lottery fund budget. This shows, just by kind of a graph, the, the slope of expenditures when we're dealing with um, the the cost of, of government from our tax, primarily the tax sources, the general fund and lottery funds. If you see the far right, that is not a current budget. That's what would be proposed for the next two years if we were to stay with a current service level type of budget. And this current service level meaning that, you know, what did we approve when we came out of session two years ago? And what would it take in the next two years to maintain that service level with all the increases that are involved? And so it's actually a proposed, it would be about $18.1 million, which is a substantial increase from where we're at and, and where we've come since uh, we got out of session. This general funds budget, 93% of it is made up of just three areas, you know, education, public safety, and human services. So it takes up the, the broad a majority, the, the vast majority of our budget is just in those three areas, each of which is crucial. Now, since we came out of session, and this is June of 2009, we've had quarterly revenue forecasts, and they're all listed here. So we, we essentially borrowed, or used one-time money, not borrowed, but we took one-time money to balance the budget, and that number is now according to the reset cabinet, placed at $1.9 billion of one-time money, you know, federal funds, ARRA funds, uh, sweeps, uh, rainy day fund, other funds that we had, to balance the budget. That was so that we could end the session with a balanced budget. But since then, you see every quarterly forecast has gone down. Now, the one in the far right shows the most recent one. Now, if you read it closely, it says that we had an increase but in reality, it was a $40 million decrease. The reason it came out as an increase is the Department of Revenue, as of January 1st, increased the payroll deduction tax so that everybody who has a payroll deduction is paying more into the system. That's for 2011 tax year, but the money that comes into the coffers between January and the end of the June shows up on the balance sheet as additional revenue. But it's going to have to be mainly going back in refunds and so forth in, you know, when, once returns are, re, are filed for 2011 next year in 2012. And so it's a temporary increase in revenue, but it's for the current tax year. And yet it shows as an increase because you're dealing with money that's coming in during the last six months of this biennium. So you have to look closely at where those funds are at and whether or not they're going to be available. Now the truth is we may end up using part of that money to get through the current biennia, but it's money that will have to be made up as a reduction of funds in the next two years, which even makes 2011 more severe. We have forecasts, and, and this is a, a, a graph showing 
how the last several forecasts have come in. And realize we've had a reduction in revenue every quarterly forecast for the last 10 quarters. But as you see, happy days are here again after every quarterly forecast. And so you know, we have one here. Um, this was in, when we were still in session, and it, and it went down $533 million, and yet the slope, the anticipated recovery was going to be right about, you know, immediately after the forecast, it's going to get better. And so this has continued to happen where our, our I'm, I'm grateful for optimists, but when you have a state <laughs> economist who's an optimist, it's like consistency is usually a virtue, but to be consistently wrong 10 quarters in a row, and then to say, don't worry, after the December forecast, happy days are here again, and that we're going to have this recovery is a challenge for us in the budget system because we have to create a budget based on the forecast. And if the forecast is overly optimistic, it means in the next two years, when the next forecasts come out, and amazingly enough, 11 and 12 and 13 are not too different than the prior ones, if that's the case, then we have a hole in our budget because we balanced a revenue that didn't show up. And so it's going to be very important for us to make sure that we anticipate the possibility that it may not be as positive as it's being proposed. So um, it, it's just interesting to see how that works. So why are we having such a reduction in revenue? We are an income tax based state. 93% of our general fund revenues come from personal and corporate income taxes. And so when you have a severe recession and you have this kind of job loss, then that means that people are losing jobs, businesses aren't making money, so the corporations aren't paying the taxes that they used to, and the private sector, the employees are not paying the income taxes that they used to pay, so it means that revenues go down. So there's a direct correlation between our economy, the ability to create a positive business environment and, and re, that result in family wage paying jobs because what we really want is more people paying taxes, not by raising taxes, but, but by getting a, an environment where more people are working because you know, people aren't complaining about paying taxes when they're making good money. And so we need that kind of, uh, of an environment where we can stimulate a greater uh, amount of opportunity for us to recover. Now, an in interesting point is when you see this kind of a figure, 154,000 uh, jobs lost, the reset cabinet says about 140,000, I've seen 170,000, whatever the number is, it's a lot. And so I asked the head of the revenue office, in a good environment, how many jobs do we normally create in a year? And he said that, you know, if you look at, at about a 15 year average, it's 25,000 new jobs a year over time. And so that means that if we were in an average economy, we could expect to maybe get 25,000 new jobs next year. So, little arithmetic means that, you know, whether it's 140 or 175,000, we're six, five, six, seven years out before we return to the same employment level that we were at in 2007. You see, so it's really uncertain because we're not at a normal circumstance. And so how long will the recession continue? We're not sure, but we need jobs back to increase the, the revenue, and without those jobs and without the increased revenue, it means that we're in for a long-term period of deficits. Now, back in 07-09, when we had a forecast, things were looking pretty bright. The forecast said, if you look at the, the black line, it was revenues, and so over time it looked like the revenues are going to continue to increase at a faster rate than the expenditures. But then the Great Recession hit and things changed. And so now, if you look at what we're facing, this is why the, the governor's reset cabinet refers to this as a decade of deficits. Because as you see, going into 2011-13, uh, they're saying 3.3 billion, well that's changed now, it's gone up. But for every biennia after, the, the revenue is expected to be less than what would be needed if we were to retain the current service levels that we've had in the past. This is dramatically important to everyone here because your responsibilities and opportunities and challenges are to help meet the needs that exist. Those needs don't change, except they might get worse with a negative economic environment. But when revenues are down, the challenge that we all will be facing, and it's all of us as a community, 
is how do we adjust the way that we work with one another so that we can provide the services for those that need them the most with a substantial reduction in revenue. That is the challenge that we face. Now, these dotted lines show kind of a positive idea or a, a more pessimistic idea of what the revenues might be. Uh, I am more of a pessimist about it uh, because of a number of reasons. I look at the federal government, I look at the spending, I look at what's happening around the world, I look at the amount of jobs that we've outsourced and where those new jobs are supposed to come from. You know, when, when we've lost a manufacturing base to such an extent, all of those things cause me to believe that we're in this for the long term. And so I would probably be down here. Uh, Peter may or may not be, see it quite as, uh, you know, as negative as I do, but I think that it's wise for us to prepare for the worst and then provide triggers so that we want to be surprised, but we don't want to be surprised the wrong way. We've had enough of that where you have to have special sessions or you have to have cuts, across the board cuts. It has such an effect on so many people in so many ways. And so, what the, so the challenge that we must deal with is prepare for what may happen and then have triggers and, and say, okay, but if we get this additional money, here's how we can utilize it. And all along this process, looking for ways to deliver services that will be more effective and, and uh, have a greater impact um, uh, on those that need it the most. This is a very telling uh, graph here because it shows how the prior recessions acted versus the one that we're in. So we had a recession in 1980, we had one in 90, we had 2001, and notice the dips that took place and how long before they were back up to zero. Here's where we're at now, and this is what is forecast now, and this is with the positive forecast. And so with this in mind, it, it becomes clear that we have an opportunity and a challenge. The challenge is to face the reality of what each of our jobs are to help meet the needs of those that are most needy in a time when revenues are down and are likely to stay down. And the opportunity is to say, if we were going to start over again with the, the, the amount of money that we have or the revenues that we can anticipate, how would we organize things? What can we do to utilize community-based um, cooperation and resources and volunteerism and all of the various things that we have in our community to help meet the needs of those that need it the most when there's going to be a change in the revenue stream that, have been, that has been relied on in the past. So that's uh, my portion. I hope that uh, we have an opportunity uh, to work together to help meet the needs of our community in a new and innovative way.